This is a complete setup guide for the newest version of the PS Move service, which is Alpha version 6. It'll allow you to use PlayStation Move controllers as Vive controllers so that you can play all Steam VR games that are meant for the Vive. This guide gives standing room or smaller room scale setup for both RiftCat users and Oculus Rift users. For RiftCat users, it enables positional head tracking when using a mobile phone along with the motion controllers. I highly recommend watching this video straight through once so that you have an idea of what the setup looks like. Then watch it a second time through and pause as you complete each step. Following this guide should get you up and running in no time. Before starting the tutorial, I'll go over the required software and required hardware that you'll need to get this all running. For required software, you'll need RiftCat if you're using your mobile phone, the PS Move service, FreePie, PS Move FreePie Bridge, Steam with Steam VR installed, AutoHotKey is an optional piece of software to help automate things, and Zydig USB driver installer. The links for all this software is in the description below. For the hardware, you're going to need three PS Move motion controllers for RiftCat users, only two for Oculus Rift, two to four PlayStation Eye cameras, your VR headset, a compatible mobile phone if you're using RiftCat, USB extension cables, active or passive, Bluetooth adapter, mini USB cable, some Velcro, camera mounting brackets, small table or raised surface, cable management, which is a bit of an optional thing to tidy things up, and your PS Move calibration mat. The cost of the PlayStation Move gear has gone up considerably since the release of the PSVR, however, the PSI cameras are not being used for the PSVR, so they are found really cheap online used. And the controllers, if you keep an eye on classified ads, you should find them for no more than $20. Might take a little patience, but they do show up from time to time. For physically installing the cameras, make sure all cameras are set to the blue dot. And there are three different ways to set these up. With two cameras, you could put two in front, and that'll give you 180 degrees tracking. With three cameras, you can set them up in a triangle pattern, and that'll give you a 360 degree tracking. Then you can use four cameras as well, and you can put those in the four corners of your room, and that'll give you 360 degree tracking with increased range and accuracy. These photos are how I have my room set up, and as you can see, I got four cameras in all four corners of the room. And this time I took the time to do some cable management to make it look alright. Keep in mind that you can only have a cable run of 16 feet at the longest with a passive cable. If you need to go further than that, you need to use an active cable or put a hub in the middle. The cameras themselves are accurate anywhere between 2 to 10 feet. So having the height of them between 6 to 8 feet will give you optimal performance while making sure it can see your head tracking at all times. So we'll start off by installing the cameras and windows by opening up Zadig. Once that's open, click Options, List All USB Devices, and then from this drop down here you'll need to select all of the USB cameras. They should start with B4. Now there's quite a few listed here, and I know you don't need to install on every single one of these. However, this takes all the guesswork out of which ones you need to do. Once you've selected one, you'll need to select the Live USB Win32 driver, and then click on Install Driver. Here you'll see that it says Reinstall Driver, that's because I've already done it. Once you've done that to every one of your cameras, Open up Device Manager and take a look under Lib USB Win32 Devices. You should see that everything's properly installed. Mine looks like a bit of a mess only because I've uninstalled and reinstalled a few times, but yours will probably look a lot cleaner. Either way, it still works. For ease of use, I've created a folder on my desktop for all the files you'll need to set this up. So the first thing we'll put in that folder is the PS Move service itself. So open up the zip file you downloaded and extract all the contents into that folder. Once that's done, open up the PS Move service folder that you created and hit test cameras. In here we're going to make sure that we can see all four cameras running properly at a good 60 frames per second and also make sure that you have your table standing in the middle and visible by all cameras. And also take this opportunity to walk around a little bit to make sure that your hands are visible in all cameras throughout the whole room. This will make sure that you have the most tracking space possible. Next step is to install the PS Move service drivers into Steam VR. So back in your PS Move service folder, double click on the install Steam VR drivers. Then you'll need to navigate to your Steam install directory and click OK. Follow the prompts. Once the window closes, run the reinstall driver batch file. Then lastly, the set variables batch file. And finally, we can run the PS Move service now. Once that's running, go back into your PS Move service folder and open up the config tool. Then click on the controller settings after you connect your first controller with the mini USB cable. Click on pair controller, 
that you should see the light blinking quickly on the controller. When you see this screen with the progress bar, keep hitting the PlayStation button while the computer tries to connect. This may take a bit of time and the progress bar may jump around a little bit, but just let it finish. Once it's connected, it'll bring you to the controller options screen. From here, you can plug in the second controller, click on pair USB again, and then repeat the process for this controller and the next one. You'll know when the controller is properly connected when the light stays solid on the bottom of it. The config tool should now see all three controllers, controller 0, 1, and 2. The next step is to calibrate the controllers. So be sure controller 0 is selected, then click on Calibrate Magnetometer. Once that opens up, I recommend zooming out a little bit with the scroll wheel of the mouse, then turning the controller on an angle like this. This helps you to see the extents a lot better. Now pick up the controller and start to move it around in all directions. Be sure to switch hands as well since each hand will hit different angles. Keep going beyond the point where the progress bar fills up and make sure the box is no longer getting any bigger as you move around. This makes sure that you have the best calibration possible and minimize any drift. Once you're satisfied with how much coverage you have, place the controller on the surface in the middle of your room with the trigger facing directly forwards on the calibration mat that you've placed on that level surface. I've taped my mat down to make sure it doesn't move around on me. Now the controller is facing forwards, click on OK, then let the calibration finish. In my experience, I found that closing out the config tool and PS Move service right after it finishes helps with keeping the controller calibration stable. This may be a placebo now, but it works for me, so I'm going to keep doing it. So let's reopen the PS Move service and config tool to finish off that controller. This may be a good time to mention as well that anytime you want to configure or use the controllers in any way, you must have the PS Move service running. Looking back at the controller settings, We'll need to now run the calibration on the gyroscope. Since we've left the controller in the same spot, we can just run this right away. Watch the progress bar fill up, then click OK when it asks. Now we can test the controller to make sure it's tracking properly and has no drift. I like to lay my controller down on the mat and have it face directly forwards like this to use as a reference point. You may see a tiny bit of drift at the start, but as long as the controller isn't continuously spinning around, you're good to go. For the purpose of this setup, you can ignore the Calibrate Optical Noise option since that's used for the newly added Kalman filter. This feature is still quite new and testing is still required to ensure it's functioning 100% accurately. Once the entire setup is done, feel free to experiment with the different filters and see how it works for you. For now though, we'll just use defaults. All you need to do now is repeat that process again on each controller, then we'll be all done with the controller calibration. To keep things moving along, I'll just jump ahead to where I'm done all three controllers. Now that all controllers are calibrated properly, we'll move on to the color calibration. Before doing this, you should set the three controllers up on your surface in a position that will allow your cameras to see each controller. Also be sure to have the lighting set in the room to a lower level and at a point you can maintain since the change of lighting may affect your tracking performance. So we'll return to the main menu and select tracker settings. Here is where you can see all of your connected cameras. As you can see, you can select between any of the trackers and controllers. So let's start off with tracker 0 selected and controller 0, then click on calibrate controller tracking colors. Once you click that, your controller should light up and you'll see the view from the selected tracker. The trick is making sure you see the orb of the controller while in mask mode. To do this, right click on the orb while your tracker is in RGB mode, then switch to mask mode. You should now see it. Click save, then apply. What you can do as well is adjust the gain and exposure up higher to help with tracking quality. Turn up the gain and exposure to a point where your tracking starts to look ugly, then back it down a notch. You can also go back to RGB mode and right click the orb again if needed to push it further, but be sure you don't see any of the light bleeding into any of your environment. Generally, I wouldn't recommend going anywhere above 100 in most cases but the exact settings depend on your room lighting conditions. Keep in mind that these two adjustments are per tracker, so you'll need to make sure that all three controllers agree with your setting on that tracker. So just run through these steps for each tracker on that controller and click save and apply after each one. Once you're done with the first controller, you can move to the second controller and start back at tracker zero and work through them again. Once you get the hang of this, each adjustment only takes a couple seconds as you can see me doing it here in real time. Instead of making you watch me do the same thing over and over, I'll just jump ahead to a point where I run into a problem. 
You'll see that when I go to calibrate the yellow controller, you'll notice that the tracker is picking up my light while in mask mode. This is no good at all. Luckily, we can simply go back to the controller settings and select a different color. Since nothing else in my room is green, I figure it will be a safe color to select. Then I'll just pick up from where I left off. Now that we have all the colors calibrated, the last step we need to worry about in the config tool is the tracker pose calibration. This is where we teach the trackers the layout of the room. Start out by laying the controllers down to avoid starting the calibration too early, then click on Compute Tracker Poses. You should see the crosshairs on the controller it's tracking, so this is the one we'll use to do the poses. Again, making sure the mat is facing forwards, stand the controller up straight on point 1, then let the progress bar fill up, then move to spot 2, and so forth until you finish the fifth. Once it's complete, you'll be able to test the tracking straight away. If you've done everything right up to this point, you should see it tracking around just fine. Before closing the config tool, zoom out and move the controller around to see if you're running into any dead spots. You should see green lines where the trackers are following the orb, and when they lose sight, those lines will turn red. This is another indicator that you are tracking the controller properly. If you see the controller jumping around at all, this is an issue that will require troubleshooting. Now that we've finished setting up the PS Move service, we'll need to make sure it's all shut down for the next part, so go ahead and close that. To make the PS Move service speak with Steam VR, we'll need to either create or modify your Steam VR.VR settings file. So navigate over to your Steam install folder, then config. In here, if you don't already see Steam VR.VR settings, you'll need to create it. So go ahead and open that up. You'll see that I have a lot in mind, but the two most important parts to get running to have is the line saying activate multiple drivers and the filter HMD line. You will need to enter in your own controller serial to filter out the third controller since we only want it for head positioning. You can find this MAC address back in the PS Move config tool. I've also pasted a copy of my Steam VR settings file into the description below, so feel free to grab that if you want. That's all we need to do in there, so you can just hit save and close. Next, be sure to run the reinstall driver batch file from the PS Move service folder. This will now make sure everything is synced. Then you will want to go and enable the region of interest setting for the PS Move service. So navigate to your user folder, then app data, and roaming. In here, you should see the PS Move service folder. So open that up and you'll find the tracker manager file. In that file, make sure disable ROI is set to false, then save and close. This is disabled by default in this release, but most likely in the next release it will be enabled by default. This saves a lot on CPU resources since the PS Move service will only track the area around the orb instead of the entire camera picture. So this wraps it up for all the Oculus Rift users. You'll just need to start up the PS Move service before you start Steam VR. For the RiftCat users, we do have a couple steps left to get positional head tracking done though. First, find the FreePie Bridge zip file and extract it into your folder you created on your desktop. This is why we have a separate folder on our desktop for our VR files. It keeps things tidy and it'll be much easier when we get auto hotkey to automate everything. Then run the FreePy MSI and follow the prompts to let it install. Once that's done, I suggest making a copy of the FreePy shortcut and placing it in the folder on your desktop just as you see here. Now go into your FreePy folder and run FreePy. Then click on File and Open. Now you'll need to navigate to the folder on your desktop and select the example script. Once you have it open, click Script, then Run. You can also just hit F5 to run it as well. Just leave this running. You can minimize it if you want. Now, we need to open up the FreePy bridge to let it know which controller will be strapped to our head for tracking purposes. First, we need to make sure the PS Move service is running again. Remember, your controllers don't really exist on your system unless this is running, so open that back up. Once it's going, go back into your FreePy folder and run the FreePy bridge exe file. The first thing in here is that it asks how many controllers you want to track. Type 1, then enter. Then it asks which controller ID you want to track. And since it's our third controller, then the ID is number 2, we type 2 and then enter. Then it'll ask to assign a custom color. Unless you're running into issues and need to do some custom work, just type N and then enter. And that's it. We're all finished. The next part is the auto hotkey script, and as I mentioned previously, it's optional. 
However, it's quite mandatory if you value your sanity. So run the auto hotkey installer and let it finish installing. Once complete, right click in your VR files folder and select new, then auto hotkey script. Open that script up in any text editor and paste the following in there. As a note, I also have the script in my description below if you wish to copy it. Just make sure you change the folders to where yours are located. This script is designed so that it starts up your PSMove service, then runs your FreePy bridge and enters in the correct values, starts up FreePy and runs the example script, and then finally opens up RiffCat, all with just a double click. Once you have it edited properly, you can save it then close. Now you can right click on it and select Compile Script. This will create your own custom EXE file for starting up your own VR system. Since the PS Move service requires to be run with elevated privileges, be sure to right click your EXE file, go Properties, then go to the Compatibility tab and make sure you check the box that says Run as Administrator and then Apply and Close. So now that we have that complete, let's make sure none of our VR related programs are running and our controllers are turned on. Then run your new script. If everything was done right, it should run everything we need, then minimize everything right before starting up RiffCat and give you a nice clean desktop. From here, connect your phone as you normally would with RiffCat, then go into your settings since there's one thing here we need to change for head tracking. Click on tracking source and be sure to select phone orientation and free track position. This will tell RiffCat to look at FreePi for the head tracking. Because we have all the new fancy controllers and head tracking set up, we'll need to run the room setup again. So have your HMD on the same level surface as we did before during the calibration, with a third controller Velcro to it and make sure it's facing exactly forward again. When you get to the point where you need to enter in the measurement, you'll need to measure how high that surface is from your floor. Because the PSI cameras only have a limited range, I actually cheat a bit and enter a few inches lower than what I measure. This helps to pick things up off the floor. You'll know exactly what I mean when you try it out yourself. So now that the room setup is done, it's time to test out our final product. Move the surface out of the way and strap on your headset. When you first open Steam VR each time, you will need to do this calibration on the controllers. Just follow what you see here in the video and what you see on the screen in your headset. From here, the PlayStation button will bring up your menu and the rest is up to you. Now I'm going to test this out with some Blade Shield. This game is awesome and I highly recommend it for your first cheap VR game with the Move controllers. I have a full gameplay video of this posted if you want to check it out on my channel. Well thanks for watching this full tutorial and I hope it helped you take some of the guesswork out of getting this all set up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more troubleshooting tips and game demos. We'll see you next time.